question, basic but really important, mm -hmm. is you know a lot of people keep asking how free is education in Nigeria, especially mm -hmm. in public schools. Um, what what would you say in that regard? Education is not free. Mm. Anybody that you know, to me, anybody that says that education is free is um, deceiving him, himself or herself. Because um, there are people that there are, there are government that you know say that they are giving free education. What about the school uniforms? What about the sandals? What about the exercise books? Hmm. What about the textbooks? What about some of the PTA levies? What are, you know? So what is free? And then let me tell you, in 2016, we conducted a research on the girl's child education in Nigeria. We said, is it her fault that she dropped out of school? You know, and we looked at uh, 26 communities in Anambra State and five local government areas in Anambra State. And uh, about uh, 246 households. It's uh, um, the state government, with the help of World Bank, funded this research. Okay. Um, led by Professor Masigo, a well-known scholar. Uh, we the aim is that we want we, we chose this local government area because they have um, they have they have some common things together. Majority of the majority, all of them, um, many of them are in the River Rhine area. Okay. Their poverty disease are quite high. Um, they are still very gendered in their mm. in the society. Girls still marry at the age of twelve and thirteen. You know, uh, a lot of the girl, a lot of the the parents uh, are not educated. They they are majorly farmers, and uh, and the fishermen are women. In fact, an agrarian society. Uh, but they have very poor and uh, deplorable infrastructure. Okay. You don't have, do have enough hospitals. I mean, you know, these areas are neglected in Anambra State. Yes. Our governor happens to come from that area. This is mm. the first time someone from that area is becoming a governor. Okay. And uh, we thought we were extreme what has happened in that place. And you know, if you listen to people, they talk about the the poor child, you know, dropout. The uh, as a syndrome in Anambra State. Yes. People do not know that in these five local government areas of Anambra East, Anambra West, Ayamelum, Oka North, and Obaru, that you have the predominance of girl dropouts, you know, in education. Hmm. Because most times the hands that they use in the farm hmm. and in fishermen, fishermen and women are fishing, and every kind of many job they do is the girls. Girls as young as 12, 13 get pregnant. So any pregnancy is, uh, is in fact, in Oka North, the percentage of early pregnancy was as high as 50 something percent. And we found out that when they drop out of school, it's about, it's about um, at the age of uh, when they finish primary six or when they finish GS3. If you listen to the numbers, we've tried to change when we take the basic exam, the junior work exam. Because before they will take it very early and the children will stay at home for more than three okay. months. Now we try mm -hmm. to bring it as close as possible to the time the you know the others can also be on holidays. Oh, because yeah. we found out from that result that they get pregnant at that at that age okay. for staying mm -hmm. idle. Mm -hmm. And we also found out with that research that uh, um, I mean there are so many hidden charges mm -hmm. in the field, whether it's we bring toilet to bring this, bring that there are so many hidden charges. Even though basic education is free hmm. or said to be free, you still have to pay for exams, for pay for small, small things, which may amount to about six hundred naira. But there are people who who can be kept at a school by just a, a pair of standards that is not up to three hundred naira. Hmm. That is how bad. And these communities, they've worked very hard, but they go, they don't have good rules. All the yams are nothing they get. People come there, buy them, off them at give away prizes yes. because they don't have access mm -hmm. to it. When I went to Ibedo, I had to go to a land in Delta State and then travel like 30 minutes on the, speed, on the, on the flying boat to get to, to Ibedo. And this is in Anambra State, wow. you see? So what we have tried to do to address more of these things, we talked about unconditional or conditional cash transfer, but we didn't have the funds for that. And therefore we started an, a program, a special 
scholarship intervention program, which is ongoing now. Okay. We've taken about 107 people from these communities. Children, um, 59 girls and, uh, um, and uh, 48 boys have been taken away from these communities and put in our very good schools as CKC, as St. Uh, Charles, KROC and all these schools. We put them there, full body, everything paid for. And mm. I went myself to the market with my team and bought practically everything for them. And uh, I mean, they are my children, so I have 107 adopted children. Wow. Scattered all over Anambra State. Mm. That's the governor for you. And we said, we believe that nature and nurture are the two things that make a human being. Nature is a personal endowment. Mm. They have very intelligent children, but their environment is not conducive for mm. education. Mm. That's where nurture comes in. Mm. So is this the first? Has it ever happened? It has never happened. Oh. I can assure you it has never happened. I hope that we continue it because mm. uh, what, what we are planning, I hope it comes to, is to have a and a kind of endowment funds okay. so that we can take this in further. And if you when another governor comes, I hope they will see it as a good mm -hmm. project and continue to continue from there. Okay, but then yeah. what's the um, hope of those ones who are possibly are not able to make it to the privileged 107? So what has been put in place at that level to ensure that perhaps um, free education becomes a reality somewhat well, I, honestly, I tell you, um, anybody that leaves um, the training or on the education of society to government alone is not being realistic. We call on public spirited individuals to come and take up some of them. Okay. We have we are forming what you call a mentorship program. Okay. And if you like, adopt five of them at marriage you know, and one or two of them from Loreto. Mm. Like you know, I, I must make sure that even when I'm not commissioner, that they wow. complete their studies somehow. And uh, we are providing mentors for them that will guide them through life. That's the program I'm trying up now. Okay. Some of us have indicated in training that mm. they want to mentor them. And that's the kind of thing we need in Anambra State. We don't want people making trouble with their money. We don't mm. want people doing politics and they're spoiling everything for other people. We want people who will genuinely develop other people. Okay. And that's where the, all the benefits will come. So people can reach out to the ministry and say, they oh, can. I'd like yes, to sponsor, I want to sponsor. Like to yes, exactly. Wow. That would, they can do that because we did targeted employment. We mm. have a, 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 in the 500 um, teachers for primary school that we, we employed, 250 are going to that area. You know, the government is also building um, teachers' quarters, if three teachers' quarters, you know, Olumbanasa, Anza, and you know, all those areas. Mm -hmm. Because one of the challenges we have are teachers who are retained there, even when we pay them 20% of their basic salary to be retained there. You go there, you don't receive the place you live. Mm. Or you go there, you don't receive the children because mm -hmm, they are mm -hmm. mm -hmm. busy doing one thing yeah. or the other, mm -hmm. you know. Even though we've said we took 120 mathematics teachers, we said we are going to give like 48 to that area. Okay. So that we follow up and make sure that, uh, um, that they have enough teachers, mm. you know. And then if the teachers have the places they can live, it can help to return them. How effective has the school feeding program been mm. in Anambra State has it been has it helped to the ministry and the work ongoing work? Well, well what I know is that uh, it has made a kind of one influx of uh, more children into the public school. Okay, and uh, that is one. Uh, and again, we have uh, even though we have not done that research in such a way, just from what snip snippets of what the uh, head teachers have told us, mm. you don't get children being frequently sick because sometimes. They say children will come to school and you see the child sleeping and you find out that that child has not even eaten anything. Okay. And some of them trek more than two kilometers to school, which shouldn't be, and they come in tired and hungry. So the school feeding has come in as a stopgap. You know, it has really helped to mm -hmm. fill that gap. You know, where some, in quote, irresponsible parents may not even give their children food. The interface between the Ministry of Basic Education and the Ministry of Women and Children mm -hmm. Affairs. Yeah, can yeah. you give us a brief on what's we, going we on? We try to work together. Mm. Uh, one, uh, to, to talk about the, uh, the Child's Rights Act, okay. you know, where we make sure that the, the right, uh, the, the, we don't get a lot, a, lot, a lot of children who are hawking and okay. stuff like that. The Ministry of Women Affairs, you know, comes in to deal with that, mm -hmm. you know, because um, it's not really our mandate, mm. it's their mandate to make sure that these children are where they should be. We, to our, for our special education centers, we work together, we go mm -hmm. there to visit them. Her Excellency Chief Dr. Olebena's uh, wife, you know, Sedeme, has been wonderful. 
you know, in the support she gives to uh, these fiscal challenge children. Okay. So, I mean, it's a synergy that you have with the UN Affairs Ministry. And then, in public schools, what's, what's your um, perspective when you find children with special needs and possibly, you know, the teachers are structured to teach normal children? I know. We, we, we honestly, we've tried to give uh, teachers a build their capacity on special education. We have done that. You know, for, because we have schools that are inclusive schools. We have um, DMGS, we have KRS, we have CKC, we have St. John of God, we have um, Stella Marie Sumeri. Mm -hmm. These are inclusive schools, you know, the okay. schools that, you know, cater for both the, uh, if you like, normal children and the, the ones that are, have one challenge or the other. So we, we just took a, a little bit of the special, um, a special education specialist, you know, and we've requested that they post them to those um, inclusive schools okay. to, to also help and see what you can do. How challenging is it for you as a woman? Of course, you have family, you have children, you're a grandmom. How do you manage to keep it all together as a close? Well, if you, to tell you the truth, um, um, because I have a very strong uh, family bond, you know, I have a husband that is uh, amazing, you know, he lets me be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, have a, a home that is very supportive. I hope you know when I was as, maybe as young as you are now, when I was young and I had to go to UK for my PhD, I left six children, my mm -hmm. husband took care of them and I went for my PhD and came back. And um, it wasn't easy for him. Uh, but for the sake of uh, the family, he had to do that. Mm. So that's what I, I tell him that he's my, the perfect husband for an academic wife. That's what mm. I used to call him. <laughs> and, uh, and my mother-in-law, by her soul rest in peace, was also my greatest backbone, you know. She looked after my children and when I was away. So, because I, one thing I tell you know, young people like you is that you must have a you must try and have a close family bond. Mm. And because it goes on to affect the children, in, mm. you know, I mean, I'm a grandma and I have two grandsons, mm. and um, my children, uh, my last baby is only 20 years, 30 years old, so I don't think I'm, I think I'm free. I don't have, <laughs> I only want to play with my grandchildren when they're around. <laughs> and then you would also say that the word for hard work is it's more work. More work. That's what I so, say. is there something new for those of us who look up to you? Is um, there something new, a new admonition or mm, something you want to put out there? I, I just say keep your eyes on the ball and make sure you have integrity. Eventually, everything will go, but your integrity is what will take you to the next level. Right. If you ever caught corners, people will know. When they want serious job, they will look for mm -hmm. you. But when they want someone who wants to do conja conja, they say look for her. But serial jobs, they will never. People come to me to do something. I say, I don't, even if you're my wife, I don't know you very well. I'm not going to write that yeah. because I don't know you. Wow, that's um, eyes on the ball. Yes, and of course, keep your integrity intact. intact. What from the professor? Thank you so much, <laughs> Thank you. Prof, for coming on the Light TV mm -hmm. show. We appreciate all your words. Mm -hmm. Thank you and keep up. We are still watching. Thank you. And expecting. Yes. And that's just what we're leaving you with today on the Light TV show. Special thanks to you uh, for being with us. Remember that the Light TV show comes your way again, same time, next week. I am Ifi Arono Kafo. Eyes on the ball. Bye now. Mm -hmm.